Hi, welcome back to the Nav Station. I'm Andy Howe. Here at the Nav Station, our goal is to get you confident enough to head out in the ocean, turn off your GPS, and get to where you're going using celestial navigation. In this episode, we're going to look at planet sites. Now, planet sites are very similar to star, uh, sun sites. Since we're in the same solar system, a lot of the same rules apply. However, planets in their orbits around the sun do some strange things that are apparent to us, even as they seem, even as we know they follow a consistent orbit, they do seem to move relative to each other in what is called retrograde motion and some other fancy terms that we really don't have to worry about. But that apparent motion does impact what we do with our site reduction process, and there are a couple of little corrections we have to add into the step-by-step -step process. But first, let's look at the planets themselves. There are four navigational planets that we use. Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. They're the ones that are brightest in the sky and are most easily recognized and are in good positions for us to use. On every set of daily pages in the Almanac, there's a list of the planets across on the left-hand page. Now, each planet has underneath it, just like the Sun, GHA and declination. So we're still tracking the geographic position of the actual planet. As we don't, as the last episode, we we're talking about SHA, sidereal hour angle. In this case, we're back to tracking each body individually. There are some numbers associated with each planet across the top of the page, and those refer to the magnitude of the planets. Now, the planets are very preferable to use to stars in many cases because they often come out early and they're very, very bright. If you look at the numbers by comparison, the magnitude of Venus is minus 4.5, a large, ne a large negative number implies a brighter object. By comparison, the brightest star in the sky, Sirius, is only a magnitude minus 1.7. So Venus is a heck of a lot brighter than, than Sirius, therefore much easier to identify quickly. Now, not all the planets are visible at one time, we know that, and when they are visible together, they're often so close to each other that it doesn't make sense to try to shoot each one because the bearings are much the same, and therefore the LOPs that you get will be not a whole lot different. So, you try to pick planets that are just like stars, are scattered around the boat that are going to give you good crossing angles of your lines of position. We'll talk about which planets are visible when, when we do our pre-calculation exercises in the next episode. But if we, we can do a quick site reduction, because it's very straightforward, and we'll see how the uh, new corrections factor into the process. So here's our setup. We've got a date of April 14th, a dead reckoning position here, and the time of our site. We've taken a site of Jupiter, and this is the sexton angle we recorded, and here's the index error and the height of I. Just as we did with the Sun, the first thing we're going to do is correct the site. So we'll apply the index correction, and the error is on, so the correction is off, and it's just a small amount, 0.8. 41 degrees, 34.8 is that. And then we apply the height of I and the dip correction for a 10 foot height of I, looking at the dip correction table in the page in the almanac is minus 3.1. Make that correction and, oops, and we end up with our apparent altitude of 41 degrees, 31.7 minutes. Next, we go into the altitude correction tables. And in this case, it's along with that column that we use for the stars, right in the middle of the, of the page, it says stars and planets. We treat it the same way. Find two values that bracket our HA and pull out the correction. Again, it's going to be a very small correction. In this case, it's only minus 
1.1 and make that correction and before we finish we need to look at the altitude correction page and in the middle there's also separate listings for certain planets at certain times of the year. And those are additional corrections which you treat the same way as you did this one. You go in and find values that match up and pick the correction that applies. In this case, there are no additional corrections for Jupiter, so we don't have to worry about that. And then we can just call this HO. That's our observed altitude our sex now to correct it out for all the errors that are that we have to worry about. Next we go into the daily pages of the Almanac, April 14th, and we're on the left hand side of that set of pages and we're going to pull out the GHA of the planet for 10 hours of GMT time. Similar to the Sun, the process we use for the Sun. So the GHA for 10 hours is 24 degrees, 34.8. And while we're there, we'll also pull out the declination, which is given for each hour. And the declination is south 13, 35.8. Next, down to the bottom of the page, we have our little D is back. So we'll put that next to our declination. The little D value is minus 0.1, very small. And there's another correction there called V, little v. And little v is under the, the GHA column, so it applies to GHA. So we have a V correction here of 2.0 and the V corrections are always positive unless they're labeled negative. In this case there's no label so it's a positive correction. This V and D just like we did with little d before we have to go and get the actual correction out of the increments and corrections pages in the back of the almanac. Same thing with little v. You may recall that there was it was labeled V or D because the same interpolation table applies to each one. Next, we go into the back of the almanac to the increments and correction page for 12.03, 12 minutes and 3 seconds. And first we pull out, go to the 12 minute box, slide down to the 3 second line, and pull out our uh, value of um, 3 degrees, 0, 0, 0.8. And if we want, we can just add those together. But we have to also take care of little v. So let's go over to double cross the double line in that same 12 minute box and look for a, first we'll do the declination, look for a D value of 0.1 and it says the correction is zero. So declination is all completed. We don't have any additional correction to apply there. However, if we look to find a V of two, we find that the correction value is 0.4. And again, it's added. So we end up with a final GHA of 27 degrees, 36 minutes even. So the only thing we've done different here is added in our V correction and in the site correction 
process if there had been an, an additional correction for the particular plan that we're shooting we would have had to apply it here as well so it's really just two additional corrections we have to look for now we're going to take our GHA and we're going to apply our assumed longitude just like we did with the Sun and with any other body for that matter so we're going to take our assumed, lati assumed longitude and since it's west, we know we're going to subtract it. So this is going to become 60 degrees, 36 minutes west. And since we can't subtract 60 from 27, we're going to add 360, and that becomes 387. And we subtract and we get 7, 2, Three, an LHA of 327 because remember we plugged in the longitude subtracting west and we applied the minutes to match the minutes of GHA so we'd end up with zero minutes in the answer. At this point we can go into the site reduction tables with the same information we've always done. We have LHA, we have declination, and we'll take our longitude, uh, latitude and make it 23 degrees even. And that'll be our assumed latitude, and here's our assumed longitude. So we're going to go into the site reduction tables with these three values, and we're going to find the HC, the D, and the Z. So first we find a page set that matches 23 and then we find a page set in there that matches our range of declination, the smaller range of declination. And then since we're contrary, the latitude is north but the declination is south, we have to make sure we're on a contrary name page. So that's three things to check, double check, and when you do that you're on the right page, and then you're going to find LHA, and the LHA of this size is going to be on the right-hand column of 327, and you're going to pull out an HC of 41 degrees 38 minutes. And your little D is going to be minus 45, and your Z is going to be 135. Now, remember that we have to look, since we're in north latitude, we look up on the upper left-hand corner to see our little cheat formula for LHA and Z to ZN, and it says LHA greater than 180, which it is, ZN equals Z. So we don't have to do anything more to Z and ZN. And then we have to go to the interpolation table Table 5 to interpolate between for 45 and a rounded off minutes of declination 36. And when we cross reference 45 and 36, we come up with a correction of minus 27. And that gives us 41 degrees 11 minutes for a final HC. Next, to finish this off, we're going to take our HO of 41 degrees, 30.6 minutes, and we're going to subtract the smaller value, which is our HC of 41.11 minutes, and that will give us a final value of 19.6 nautical miles and if we think about that remember we're starting at the assumed position which is where we would record a value of 4111 if we'd been standing there but we actually observed a value of 4130.6 so to get from the assumed position to this point we have to move towards the body so we're going to label this towards
because we start at 4111 and we go to a place where there's going to be a larger number recorded on our sexton, that means we were closer to the geographic position of the body. And that's it. We would plot this just as we would anything else. We plot the assumed position. We draw the ZN line at 135, pointing in that direction. And then from the assumed position down towards that ZN, we'd draw, we'd measure 19.6 miles, and there we would draw our perpendicular line of position. And we would be somewhere on that position, the point on that line, somewhere on that line, the position being closest to our DR. So that would be our estimated position. So that's a planet. Not a lot of difference. We've got a possible additional correction here. And obviously this is coming out of the stars and planets altitude correction table, which we talked about last time. Uh, and then we have our little V factor to, to put into play here that applies to GHA. And that's it. The otherwise, the site production process is identical to the sun. Uh, and because we're pulling out GHA and declination for the second minute and hour of the day, just like we do for the sun. So would we, the next episode, we're going to work on three different methods of pre-calculating the positions of stars and planets at any given time. And which one you choose to use is entirely up to you, but they both work very well. All three of them work very well. And in some cases, you use a mix of those to get to your list of bodies to shoot in the twilight hours in the morning and in the evening. So we look forward to seeing you here back at the nav station when we get into some nitty gritty like that. And if you haven't subscribed, do so. We got a few more episodes to go and we'll ping you as they drop. And we look forward to having you back here. Thanks for stopping by.